Before she's born, before her father is even born, her future has been painted out. A horrifically beautiful art of blood and fear. Her grandfather lost his life fighting a war on terrorism, never able to look into the eyes of his unborn child, who now grew up without a father. But he is proud of him for he is proud of him for fighting and is grateful because he has a hero looking out for him. But he's upstairs with God. This was in 1968. Today is June 2017 and she feels like she's now fighting a war. In elementary school, she gets asked where she is from when the rhythm of her name wasn't smooth on their uncultured tongues and Glare sent messages of pity, as if her terrorist descents have dehumanized her. She wakes up every day in fear that her father, sister, and brother's lives will be taken in a terrorist attack. No, they do not live in the Middle East. In fact, they are citizens of the land of the free in which freedom of religion is promised but absent. Is she American or is she Arab? Is she allowed to be both? She feels the pain and suffering of Palestinians and is tired of feeling guilty for the passport that she holds because they have turned against her. Dear Islamophobes, why did you target my dad, Juju Mosque? Why does his practice and love for his religion frighten you when the Islamic customary greeting is Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum as -salam, meaning may peace be upon you and upon you be peace. Dear County Sheriff, why do you criminalize my sister's university for its beautiful diversity? Why am I questioned simply because I consider myself an American but my skin is not white? Please tell me what an American looks like. Enlighten yourself on the history of the land of the free to know that that land was stolen from people with far darker skin than yours. Dear Islamophobes, why must my mother's life be at risk for walking in the streets of Texas, even though she's an American but her headscarf automatically makes her a terrorist? The University of Kansas now has escorts for students to get to their classes safely. Doesn't this sound familiar? Ruby Bridges, the first African-American to desegregate white schools, needed escorts to avoid violence. Don't you learn? Don't you see? But you know what? I understand. Because even here, the land those white folks tell me to come back to, I'm considered an outsider in. Is my blood not enough proof that I am Arab? How about the fact that my grandfather lost his life fighting for Palestinian. You are Palestinian. I don't feel the need to prove anything to you. So when they come for me, I will hold, I will, I will, sorry. So when they come for me, I will hold the hands of my brown skinned Americans. And when they try to keep us quiet, we will, we will yell louder than their oppression. Racism is handed down like secondhand clothing by teachers and parents and taught through the silence of the bystander. Do not let the rain wash up wash away the pain. Do not let white supremacists devalue our existence. Speak up, speak louder. Trust me, I know how you feel. You feel worthless and you feel incapable. I bet you thought to yourself at some point in time, what can I do? One person doesn't make a difference. But you were handing the gun to the murderer, asking them to shoot you, to shoot me, to shoot us, so technically we're all murderers. I'm torn between two worlds. I'm overwhelmed and I'm devastated. I'm getting too weak to save myself and I'm begging every ounce of hope, light, and pride within me. Treasure our culture. Don't let us die. And fight. Fight with everything. Thank you, grandfather, for being my doorway to freedom.